Welcome back. It's a game about training journalists for the rigours of covering war zones. But can an interactive video game for the public really address the issues involved? Well, the designers of Global Conflicts Palestine gave me an exclusive look. At first glance, a standard role-playing video game, but the location is Jerusalem, and your character is a journalist facing ethical dilemmas. The reason why we made this game was basically to try and uh, take a new approach to current issues. Um, it seems like a lot of times you're you know, quickly flashing by a CNN newspaper, something else, and, um, and this game gives you a chance to dig a bit deeper and hopefully also catch some people that might not really take a big interest in current issues. So the journalist is meeting his editor? Yeah, I'm here your, your first conversation with your editor. And each mission is basically about you writing a story. You can choose from three different angles. And the angle you choose will, will kind of control what quotes you should get. Great. So, um, and I basically have the Israeli newspaper Haratz, the Palestinian newspaper Al Quds, and the European newspaper The Independent. And you choose whichever newspaper you yeah. want to write for. Well, we can try to um, we can try to go for the Israeli here, and then they're saying what Haratz is interested in. So it's mm -hmm. interested in a story about the way in which IDF protects the Israeli citizens against terrorism. This is actually quite a typical situation. You, the soldier here is saying, now I can feel it. Something's happening. They must have gotten a hold of that terrorist. See, here he comes. And the journalist has a choice of either two questions. Mm. Isn't it kind of odd to call him a terrorist like that without any proof? Or he can ask, how do you guys know he's a terrorist? Mm. And depending on which answer he gives, it will predetermine the response of yeah. the Israeli army soldier. And also, actually, if you build up trust up till now, he might also be more forgiving. So you can actually get further with the critical questions than if you had been critical already at the start. Okay, so <laughs> I say, how do you guys know he's a terrorist? Yeah. And the answer is from the Israeli soldier, uh, I don't know, I just listen to the commander. He always has control of things. He says we have good and reliable information. And then I can either say, I think the commander's being a little rough with that guy. How can you guys even be sure he's done anything? Which is sure to get a reaction of mm. some kind. Or I can say, I can see that the commander is giving that terrorist what he deserves. Mm. And again, depending on which answer I mm. go for, yeah. that mm. will predetermine how far I get with this raid. And is, exactly. there, is there a possibility I can be kicked out of the um, raid altogether and sent back home? Um, not at this point, but, yes. but, uh, but you will lose out of, you may lose out of information. Other missions tackle issues such as checkpoints and settlements, and designers insist they have researched and taken a balanced approach to the Middle East conflict. The region will be able to make up its own mind when the game releases weeks from now. Well, for more on this, I'm joined by Adrian Monk, a former executive at ITN and Sky News. He's now head of journalism at Britain's City University. Your impressions of this game? I think it's an interesting effort to get kids interested in understanding an issue like the Middle East. But I think what it is, is it's quite a slow way of involving them. You know, the kids are used to shoot 'em ups. This is a chat 'em up, you know, a lot of on screen talking. And so I think they're going to struggle with the excitement of actually engaging with the issue. What is the difficulty in trying to put a game like this out into the public domain? If you just look at the kind of issues broadcasters and media organizations have in reporting the Middle East conflict, huge, huge accusations of bias from both sides of the conflict. And to actually say there are two sides in the conflict is, again, to completely kind of underestimate the dimensions of opinion that exist on this. So you're really looking at quite a simplistic portrayal of how the conflict works, a pro-Israeli, a pro-Palestinian, or a neutral stance on the conflict. Well, there's an enormous range of grey in between every one of those positions, and broadcasters know it, and some broadcasters and media organisations find themselves 
caught in the crossfire, literally. Even the title, Global Conflicts Palestine, I mean, Israel has a huge problem with uh, the West Bank and Gaza being called Palestine. Absolutely, and you know, the place it's centered in, which is Jerusalem, is again, not perhaps the place you might look to understand the conflict that's going on. It's a very distinct environment and actually not somewhere where you see the conflict really in, in all its detail. Well, it's also an evolutionary process, though. It's very difficult to keep games uh, up to the moment. And is it something that you see evol evolving in the next few years, interactive games actually becoming more of a, more of a, a game, but be it an educational tool? Well, I certainly think they'll be more involved in actually engaging with conflicts. If you look, for example, at a new game that's coming out very soon also, which is called Peacemaker, that's a strategy game that's attempting to put people in the place of a, of a Middle Eastern uh, politician. And the aim of the game is to kind of broker peace, if you like, and to understand some of the pressures on decision makers. And we know that when, you know, military figures are trained, they use a lot of role playing, a lot of scenarios, a lot of wargaming. And that's traditionally part of that kind of approach. So it is useful, but it's as useful as the information going into it. So if you have very good information going into these scenarios, you're going to get quite a good result. If you have quite limited and quite basic information going in, you're going to get a bit of a disappointing result. All right, we have to leave it there. Adrian Wright, thank you very much indeed. That is all for this edition of International Correspondence. Tune in again next time for another look at how the media are handling the big issues. I'm Fanula Sweeney. Thanks for joining us.